Good afternoon and welcome to the Montgomery Meadows, Montgomery Waters Meadows, Shrewsbury Town. I'll start again, shall I? Good afternoon and welcome. We're live at Montgomery Waters Meadow, the home of Shrewsbury Town FC, and this is the under 18 Schools Cup for B team final between John Medeski Academy from Reading in the blue, in the light blue, and it's Thomas Telford in the maroon from Wolverhampton let's have a look at the teams that are lining up here today in goal it's Joe Whiter Ethan O'Kelly Callum Rolfe who's the captain wearing 17 these numbers are all over the place aren't they it's like, it's like watching NFL Caelan Barlow Luke Donville Dennis Haxiu Haxiu sorry Hassan Hibriel Kian Leahy Nicky Heffernan Will Oakin Peters and Richard Colley are the starting 11, managed by John Paulson. John Paulston, even. As for Thomas Telford, John Acton in goal, Jason Harris, Joshua Garrington, Ethan Tien and Spratt, Joseph Byrne, Joseph Richards, Jamie Boulderston, Stephen Nicholson is the captain, Joshua Smallwood, Joseph Pratt, and Ryan Knott. Paul Bullock and Matthew Lowe are the joint managers of this Thomas Telford B team. As for the substitutes, it's um, Joe Waite in goal, Earl Omaglo, Hasib Ali, Jack Charles and Munir Fakir. As for Thomas Telford, Jamal McIntosh, Joel Hodnett, Nathan Goodfellow, Luke Payton is the goalkeeper and Dante Bradley. So uh, we're a little bit delayed here because of the previous match overrunning, going all the way to penalties. What a game that was. And, uh, well, we had, we had almost a 1,000 people in at the last match. Really great atmosphere. A little bit quieter here, a little bit more like a, a standard schools final. Now, uh, this is the B team um, competition. Uh, Thomas Telford A team went quite far. They went up to the quarterfinals. So this is um, what you would call a true B team. Um, occasionally you do get the A team of a, a bigger school or more proficient school losing out in the early rounds, meaning that some of the B teams can be strengthened with A team players that didn't play in their, for their A team in the competition. This is not the case with Thomas Telford. This is truly their, their, uh, their B team with their a team uh, got him through to, I think it was, the quarter-final stage, if I'm correct. Round six, actually. And he lost out to Repton School in round six, so that was the, the round of 16. Well, the sun has blessed us. We, uh, we did have some quite uh, horrendous hail at times in the previous match, but it was generally sunny and quite pleasant. And off we go. Referee's not messing about here. It's uh, John Medeski Academy in the uh, lovely sky blue tops. Thomas Telford, uh, maroon orange, alternating as ever. Let's get underway. Here's a solid ball down the line. Smallwood looking to get on the end of this. But he's handled by Richard Colley, who's playing left back. And he's number 56. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I am an oldie, I suppose. And uh, I sort of brought, brought up in the times when 1 to 11 was the standard. Here we go with, um, well, even goalkeepers not wearing number one. So we, it's basically, there's only two players who've got numbers less than 11. Medeski clear their line. Quite uh, a lot quieter than it was than the uh, the first game, which was uh, a real atmosphere and a half. And uh, the Hampton team are having their meal in the uh, block opposite. 
and uh, had a chat with a, a few of the coaching staff. And certainly, they uh, they were just they were thrilled to be part of what was a really great game, really enjoyable match. Well worth a watch if you get the opportunity. Here's a Whiter. Long ball down the right hand side. Heffernan trying to get on the end of it. Desky have got uh, a few players forward here. A loose ball. O'Kelly is playing midfield. One of the things about this numbering system is it's hard to tell who is left back, right back, etc. It is random numbers everywhere. And there's number 20, Kellen Barlow. Uh, sorry, number 30, Luke Donville. Hacks you. Ball just goes too far. Crossfield ball here looking for Jason Harris. Balderston chasing that one down, but it's cleared by Rolf for captain. Well, we've got a few uh, ball boys and ball girls around us collecting the balls so that they get stuck in the seating. No fans on this near side. Harris again. Scuffs the first time ball, but gets a little bit of fortune. Another chance. Ethan Tien and Sprout, we've seen him before. In front of our cameras. Whiter will clear. Dennis hacks you out. I will try and get your name pronounced correctly, Dennis. Here's Rolf. And all the play so far, pretty much down this near side of the pitch as the sun starts to move down and we get the horrendous shadow which is always going to be a nightmare for our cameraman as we move from light to dark good speed here from Willow King Peters couldn't get the quality on the cross having used a strong run down that left hand side Harris 
Yeah, looking to take the free kick. Pratt. And the pressure there from Jabril. And Pratt spreads the ball out left. Here's Garrington. Oh, that's a loose pass and read easily by Donville. He's pushing forward. Shot from distance and wide. An interesting uh, Luke Donville, number 30. <laughs> So far, no major breakthrough from a previous match we had where the attacking side was really uh, very strong on both teams and both defences had to do extraordinarily well. You just feel here so far, it's defences on top. Eight and a half minutes on the clock. And so far, the attacking motion from either team totally snuffed out. Bit of skill there from Balderston. Cleared out by Rolf. Player just uh, going off there. So, uh, Kalen Barlow. Not sure. Uh, is he changing boots? We had a little bit of rain just beforehand. He's not happy with his footwear. Plenty of uh, stuff going on on the sideline there. At the fourth official on the pitch for a second. Well, while we uh, wait for the match to really get going, let's have a quick look at the uh, two results uh, for teams getting through here. They've played five rounds of matches, so there's been uh, around 50 teams enter this competition. It was obviously for the bigger schools who were able to have a B team as well. And round one, looking at Medeski, the John Medeski Academy. They beat the Windsor Boys School six goals to two at home. In round two, it was an away 1-0 victory against Three Rivers Academy. Just stop for a second here. This is a push from Okeen Peters. Out to Donville. Donville, good cross in. That was a Half opportunity there from Heffernan over the bar. That's um, so that was round two match, just a one nil victory there, showing you how tight it was. In round three, it was also a tight victory, three two away at Torquay Academy. So a fair little trip there for the Reading team. Then in round in the quarter final, they beat Hampton School B team. So Hampton, we just saw winning the A-team competition, while the B-team was beaten by the John Medeski Academy, three goals to two at home. And the semi-final was a two-all draw against Brentwood School, with John Medeski winning 3-2 on penalties. So, the last four matches, only a goal separating Medeski and the opponents, and the penalties in the case of the semi-final. As for Thomas Telford, they beat Sandwell Academy 4-1 in the... Uh, sorry, they had a bye in the first round, and it was a 4-1 victory over Sandwell Academy 
in round two. In round three, a 6-1 victory over the Manchester Grammar School. All the way matches for Thomas Telford. In, round, in the quarter-final, a 9-2 victory over Oxford Academy. In the semi-final, Colday Grange Grammar School, a 3-1 victory. So, Thomas Telford have done it the hard way. Four matches on the road. Won comfortably in, uh, in just about every one of those. I think uh, two goal difference in the semi-final was uh, the tightest margin. It was uh, John Medeski Academy. Well, their last four games, all just won by the single goal, all the penalties. So an easier run, you could say, for Thomas Telford as that ball played over the top, trying to get the gap. Well, that's Dennis Haxio doing well to clear that one. Here's an opportunity. Shot was blocked. And over the bar from Jamie Balderston here on the right side. Donville, the ball still loosening around the edge of this box. There's an opportunity on the left, just slips as he Tried to put the shot in there. great um, competition again this year we've seen them in many many finals and speaking to some of their coaching staff they've made it through to a lot again this year we're going to see quite a lot of them in the finals coming up Dersky beat Thomas Telford in the National Schools final back in 2012. And uh, interesting, their quarter, their quarter final, 3 2 win against Brentwood, which uh, in Essex is a fair little trip from uh, Wolverhampton, or uh, well, from Reading. Oh, just stop there for a second. A little footnote here on the programme, we'll just stay with the play. Here's a cross in. Just a miscue in front of goal there. Uh, the funny thing about that was uh, from John Medeski on the road. They had a quarter final against Brentwood. Of course, uh, North and South uh, st split all the way. And uh, they actually turned up a week early for that match. So they had to do it twice. And apparently, he said, uh, according to the notes here, they actually won that match. They played 50 minutes with only 10 men. Presume it was a sending off. That's a little bit of skill there from the Daisy touchline. Nine Thomas Telford teams have made national finals this year. They won uh, 
the under 18 schools cup for girls a little earlier last week up at Ford it's Thomas Telford are the current holders of this competition as well they, they beat uh, Glynn at school from Sutton in last year's final at Doncaster two goals to one so uh, well we've seen uh, Repton defending champions lose out in the final earlier today in the under 18 main competition and the under 18 for A teams here's the under 18 for B what will happen here I certainly remember uh, Joseph Pratt, Ethan Tien and Spratt and Jane Bolston all part of the winning team at Doncaster last season and uh, this is Shuddy uh, their final year at school in the right corner it's a bit disjointed the play so far that's a good cross to the far post goalkeepers out and there's the appeal for handball there's no way that can be given you've hit the ball against somebody's arm There is no way on this planet that that is a handball. You can only see it like at the end of the day, you only see those given when it's at short range and the arm is in an unnatural position. second there we uh, just had a slight uh, internet outage that's too heavy from the boot of Joseph Byrne players in the box and goalkeeper John Acton does well there to come and clear Balderston inside but it's cleared out by Jabil back to Balderston Looking down the line to play in Harris so he has to go back Rolf Here's that one, and here's a great ball inside. He's onside. Smallwood. Keeper does superbly there. And clears into distance. Donville with a long ball. Academy just trying to turn defence into attack. Here's Heffernan. Looks if he's. Uh, Good busy style, turns around, the referee, uh, same play on, linesman had given a free kick for a foul on Heffernan, and the referee disagreeing and 
question was, uh, I think it was outside of the box, the referee didn't have his, uh, sorry, the assistant linesman didn't have his flag in front of his chest. <laughs> Having given the officials a mention, Steve Martin is our referee, Alex Harris and Carl Mowbray are our assistants. Mark Warren is the fourth official out there. Just got a little bit louder out on the pitch, hasn't it? The, had a little bit of a, of a easy start, I suppose. So, that crossfield ball again looking, and it, again it hasn't paid off. Trying to find Harris on the long crossfield. Here's Balderston. Does well to get to the byline. Oh, chance there for Thomas Telford as well. Joshua Smallwood was coming in for that. And, ball was just taken away from him and I think you could say that's the first proper short proper shot on goal uh. With the, with the ball. Deski got three players up forward here. And the official again. Eagle eyed helping his referee out. Seeing a tug on the shirt. And giving John Modeski Academy a free kick. feeling this is one of those matches that could be decided by a single goal. There are substitutions taking place there. Just outside my uh, ear shot, um, sight line I should say, and number 18, John, John Waite has come on. That one, and Waite was on the, close to being on the end of that, it was nearly also Richard Colley. Waite's got a bit of height on him. It was a few uh, on his taken to him and Colin only got on the end of it the centre half so uh, it looks like Will Oking Peters who was playing on the left wing well John, John Wright has, uh, has gone there now for a free kick quite, quite cold out there but for, for, the, for the footballers it's great conditions to play and the pitch is really nice condition taking a stud and been watering it in between matches Joseph Pratt here number 19 just swing it in but that's a terrible contact on the ball gets a second chance I think the, I think the uh, Thomas Telford management would be quite frustrated there. Uh, 
three attempts uh, to sort of get the ball in and none was successful. Here's Pratt. Has to play and go the other way. Nice, nice play there from Not. He's asking for a penalty for that. And the referee is not interested. A few, uh, few little appeals to the referee there. How did you not see that, etc., etc. Lovely stadium here at the Montgomery Waters Meadow. Jabril in the middle of things there. I didn't finish off earlier, but it is Will Oki Peters who went off. Number 54. Solid tackle from Heffernan there. And the ball back for his team. It's really getting quite tough. And uh, from that confrontation, it's number 17 that's still on the floor. And here's Colin Rolf, who. Although fouling. Uh, his opponent actually uh, got a whack for it and I think the referee's just having a little chat there with uh, Stephen Nicholson, the captain on captain there. Well although the referee initially gave a free kick I think to Thomas Telford, he actually reversed it. Quite interesting. Certainly uh, the confusion with players on the pitch there for a second. Here's Rolf looking okay after that little uh, knock he got. And there's a few players uh, pulling out to Jason Harris there as to what, what's, what's he playing that ball for, just giving the position away. way that uh, Thomas Telford like to play their football, really like to play to feet, play the ball through, Harris again at right back, he's finding quite a lot of space here, Oking Peters was playing on a sort of left midfield, left forward position and almost uh, looks like the Medesky Academy have not really replaced that position, more of a Packed more into central midfield, and, and Donville is the most further forward left sided player for the Medeski Academy. Burn. Long ball upfield for Smallwood, who tries to win that one. Balderston putting a bit of pressure on there. Good bit of play, and then just let down with a poor ball. That was a uh, Ryan not there. First bit of nice little football that created Thomas Telford an opportunity, and then a, and it's just let down. Not been the best match so far to live up to this final tag, Nicholson. Alderston and Harris going down that wing and right back. Players in the box here for Telford, two in the box. 
ball just too high for not. Does well to keep it in, or he doesn't keep it in. Throwing given. with Dumbbell, referee says it's okay. Pratt, not wide. Nicholson, the captain. Free header for Dumbbell in the box. Just had a bit of pressure behind. Telford still win the ball back. A little bit of a little bit of domination here for Thomas Telford. Disco Academy just. Stuck in around their own box at the moment. Lovely little one-two here. Oh, lovely skill. Cuts it in. Oh. That was wonderful to see. Bit more of a crowd uh, develops. Of course, we're, we're just up the road from Wolverhampton here in Shrewsbury. So, uh, probably a few more Telford fans here, they certainly had a big uh, showing in the matchup at Fard, which is much uh, further to go as uh, Thomas Telford Ultras were, were in good good form there. Dumbo flicks on. Dumbala there, just losing out on the ball. Dumbo will happily pick that one up. Here's the substitute, wait. That's a beautiful ball for Heffernan. Just too far. And keeper is sharp off his line. Coming up to the final ten minutes in this first half. It's under 18 Schools Cup for B teams final for 2019. given Josh Garrington left back just going over to swing this on in with the left foot Thomas Telford a five in the box looking to get this the centre halves are up as well there's one awkwardly on that and offside flag has gone up Side to Richards. Fong is not. Left back on the overlap there. Doing well is Garrington. Seeing the opportunity to try and get in and around the back. Garrington, look, one two with Pratt here. It's a good quality cross in. Goalkeeper's lost it. And a bit of fortune. Uh, manages to recover that at one stage, just had a kick at it with his foot. Good play there from Thomas Telford, who just feel the last 10 minutes have just started taking a hold of this match. Jabril there, just Oh, 
ball was moving, so we'll take that again. This time short. Burn. Searching ball down the left again. Academy managed to Podeski managed to clear and now Heffernan who's always looking a threat. And that's put out by uh, Tony Stafford number 12, Joseph, but Joe Byrne. on Friday coming up over Redditch, Redditch United's ground south of Birmingham as uh, the England under 18 international team face Northern Ireland Northern Ireland uh, I remember commenting, commentating on that match a year ago over in the north and Northern Ireland won that match 4-1 absolutely dominated and currently top of the group so it's a big match for England we've already had one defeat to Wales and one victory away to Scotland it's a real big match on Friday for the England team looking to have any hopes of claiming the Centenary Shield Trophy the Wales who beat them actually lost 1-0 to Northern Ireland so one of those victories that would uh, give England a, a pretty good chance of at least tying at the top of the group as they still have yet to play Ireland as well Ireland uh, won the competition last year they've got a mark with a victory in their first match so big game for England on Friday still a lot in their control Francis gives the ball away there, trying to find Pratt. Nice skills from Barlow. Plays a lovely one-two there. And uh, well, there's, there's an opportunity over the top. Wait was, was looking to get on it, but offside flag was up. I thought he'd managed to run that perfectly. He looked, he tried to time his run, but unfortunately he wasn't spot on and just got a player down at the moment. Five minutes to go in this first half. It's uh, been one where defence is pretty much on top, but Thomas Telford just starting to play some of their football at their coaching staff. And see Des Little over there shouting out instructions. He's a busy man these days. He's always busy, of course, when he was on the pitch as a footballer with mainly with Nottingham Forest, but other clubs, of course, as well. But he's, uh, he's had a great time at Thomas Telford and uh, hugely successful with his coaching. Thomas Gaisky uh, asking for a foul there. Referee's not interested, and Thomas Telford have a man free on the right. They've had to, Dumbo's had to come back and cover that. Here's Harris, who's had a lot of the ball here in this right-hand side, along with Balderston. Cross just hangs in there. Just had enough curl on it to stay in. And the Redeska defence were thinking, or maybe hoping it was going to hang out. Smallwood. Good play from Nicholson. Captain's role. Francis wanting the ball switched across. Thought he had a chance. They've played it down the left hand side. And offside from an earlier move actually.
Nice skills from Joseph Pratt. He's broken down. Hefner making a strong run down the right-hand side. Again, Thomas Telford managing to nick that ball back for uh, the Dayski team can even look at getting a ball forward yet again solid challenge in Ethan O'Kelly in that midfield picked on by weight come a long way back to it get the flick on there oh, lovely skill from Pratt here's Francis again here's Harris again comes inside balls just loose from age there appeal for a penalty not given and a left foot shot from Boulderston not with his strongest foot straight into the keeper's arms We'll be, uh, we will be just resetting one of our machines here during half time. So if you do lose the stream, do not worry. We have, uh, we're not going anywhere, but we will just be resetting. So you'll see the stream stop at half time just for a short while, just for five minutes. Meanwhile, here's an opportunity and the first real shot and goal from Caelan Barlow. Good little bit of play there from Heffernan up on the right hand side, who's certainly been. Uh, one of the brightest attacking forces and also like to wait here number 18 the substitute and Sir Oking Peters uh, has gone off and I'm not sure he, if he's going to come back on again because we do uh, allow rotating substitutes at this level so players who've gone off can come back on sometimes it's a very valid tactic to give somebody 10-15 minutes rest and then bring them back on later this has been timed perfectly. Great run here from Harris. Goalkeeper. Superb. Joe Whiter off his line like a shot. And the referee has decided there is no additional time. That will do us for this first half. First half where I think it's fair to say there are no highlights. It has been a match which has been uh, pretty much defensive sides on top I think it's fair to say John Medeski Academy nil Thomas Telford nil we are going to reset our machine here for a couple of minutes so um, if you're watching this and you just see that little hourglass or that little rotating thing I think it's more like now isn't it on YouTube don't worry we are going to come back you will see pictures of the second half but we're just going to have a little reboot and uh, we'll be back shortly so uh, stay with us Go and get a cup of tea. We'll be back soon.
So here we go for second half, a sort of substitution that board was up, but just having a look around, not easy to identify so far, so let's just leave that for now. Ball keepers uh, look very accomplished here, as, uh, as White up, he has had uh, a bit of pressure on. Here's Heffernan. He'll win the throw there, off Garrington. Number 28, Nathan Goodfellow, there's our substitute. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, Earl Maglo is our substitute for John Medeski Academy. Really high ball right to the edge of the box and tough for clearing. Nice little touch 23 Hasib Ali also on for the Medeski Academy in at left back. So Medeski using three substitutes so far in this match and Thomas Telford still with their starting lineup. Ali puts in a deep cross, that could be trouble. Here's a chance. In and a goal. Medeski lead. And, well, <laughs> they're all going crazy down there against the run of play that we've seen. And, well, now, deep ball from the left side. As we just look at the replay here, Ali puts the deep ball across. Goalkeeper a little bit in no man's land. And it's number 28 who crosses it in. And well, watch this for a celebration. Or maybe not. <laughs> there you go. He's a happy man indeed. That was uh, number 20, Caelan Barlow with the goal. Little nudge there. I think it was the number 20, it could be the, could be the number 18. I'd, maybe my director can just check on that as to the number of the person who scored there. Well, Medeski. Getting the first goal of this match. Not really having had much of an impression in the first half at all. We have a, another look at the, uh, the goal again, perhaps, at the next, uh, next time a ball goes out. Might be able to have a name check on this. I think there's confusion also in the arena, because they haven't announced it in the arena yet either. It was either the shorter number 20, Caelan Barlow, or it was weight, the taller number 18, as that ball goes out. Let's have another look at that goal. Crossing from Ali really causing a bit of confusion. Is that there you see Wait, and it is Wait who scores number 18 who puts the ball in the back of the net. It was one of the two, we just needed to double check that. Ryan Knock, Josh Garrington just looking for options, doesn't really find any, but takes on O'Kelly. Tackle again, really are 
Any fierce challenges. This could be awkward for the goalkeeper. He decides to let his defender do a bit of work to clear that out. Referee says throw to Thomas Telford. One of those 50 50s, I think, there. That's a good quality cross from the left. Josh Garrington there. And it was Jamie Balderston who got ahead on it. He's now chasing down the left back. Cleared by Byrne. And out of play. Getting quite cold here. We've uh, Clocks have gone forward, so at least it's still going to stay light for a little while. What are we on? It's uh, five past six here in Shrewsbury, so... Still got another hour and a half of daylight. It's just a little bit cloudy. I don't think they're aiming to put the floodlights on. We've only got another 40 minutes to go. Played a few matches under the floodlights so far in the finals that have taken place with these later kickoffs. Daisky sniffing a second. It's Thomas Telford yet again. Break the play up in midfield. There's good play from Jabril. Side to O'Kelly, and here's an opportunity, a good shot on goal. From Waite, looking for his second. And a foul on the Telford team. And referee not too happy with a bit of a delaying tactics, but they managed to get the ball out. Ali, that's a big clearance. He's asking the referee for the foul. <laughs> I think... Uh, he could have had the foul if it had gone down, I think. Here's that, uh, here's that earlier chance. As uh, Waite has played in. Nothing happening in uh, real time, by the way. The ball's just gone out of play. Goalkeeper read that one well. Josh Garrington with the throw for Telford. Picked up by Barlow. Here's O'Kelly. Out wide to Wolf, the captain. Back to inside to Waite. And Waite loses the ball, got it trapped under his feet. One of the Telford players just uh, stopped at the moment. I think he's taken a bit of a whack. He's uh, Josh Garrington, I think, uh, down here. He's just struggling a little bit. Well, well read. By the number 12, Joe Byrne again in the centre of defence for Thomas Telford. Here's Waite, the goal scorer. Good control from Waite. Just one in the box, marked by two. It's Heffernan. This is a lovely touch. He's going to have a shot from distance. He's very confident just to sm try and have a go at smashing one in from 30 yards there. There's Jabril. And uh, we've got two players down at the moment. And I think Josh going to number 21 is just been hobbling and is struggling a little bit. There's a few players stretching their, their hamstrings out there at the moment. This is a big pitch out here. Both teams got a few players out there warming up. It's getting ready in case. So Garrington was just involved in a couple of solid challenges down there and I think one just shook his bones a little bit and uh, looks like the left leg that's giving him a bit of grief or maybe it's, well, maybe it's just a, little, a bit of muscle tiredness Let's have a, I'm not a medical expert of course Oh, well, there's a bit of treatment on. This is the goal. That's the difference between the two teams. Across from Ali. Wait. And Barlow both pushing in. And then, well, what a great ball that is. Back across goal. 
and wait was waiting for it. So a little bit of rain, just hearing on the top of the stand above me, it's freezing cold here. We had hail a while ago, so it wouldn't be surprised me that we get a little bit more hail here because it is these icy conditions. The sun has well and truly gone behind the dark clouds above us. Yes, the hail is coming down. We're definitely hearing the, the harder hail hitting the tin roof here above us. It's Medeski. Here's crossing as wait, looking to get on the end of that, but straight at the keeper. In this second half, he's definitely John Medeski Academy have been much more on top. I say the first half was. Uh, Split points decision to Thomas Telford. Well, this second half he's definitely gone the academy's way as uh, the hail starts to come down. Josh Garrington just back up and running again. That a little bit of treatment he had, did the job, and that will be a free kick. A little touch on the back of the ankle. An apology from Dennis Haxhew. Oh, the referee doesn't have his spray. Most of the officials have... Uh, The spray cans out. This one uh, needs to get on Amazon. Pratt. Good play from Pratt. Takes on two down the left. Cuts the ball back, but <laughs> on oh, a cramp on there, on there as well. And now Heffernan's got half a chance, but that ball is way too, too long forward. Telford got three in the box here. Just starting to step up the pace and just felt that John Medeski there didn't have enough players back for that particular attack. Now the ball's been given away too easily by Jabril. Goalkeeper has to clear these lines. I do like uh, this goalkeeper for John Medeski, Joe Whiter. He's always been very prepared to get involved when need be, coming off his line. And a few times in the first half, had to be very sharp. He's done everything that he's needed to do in this match. Ball hits Heffernan's hands, and usually those sort of things are given, to be honest, and that he definitely benefited from that. Is it me? Did it just get colder here? It feels colder and colder. It just feel as if I got climatised to it before and it's dropped a few degrees. This hail that just uh, is tippling down. Ali's oh, been dispossessed. Here's an opportunity. Thomas Telford, it's three on three here. There must be a shot, good chance on goal. Saved by Whiter. And over the bar. Joseph Pratt there with the opportunity and you really felt Thomas Telford were going to equalise there. Let's have another look at that. Ball was given away needlessly by Ali and here comes Pratt. 
and well saved by Whiter there. Mr. Hill just ratchets up another little notch on the scale. Really midfield. A real battle there with Nicholson. Nicholson just coming out on top on that encounter. And Jabril almost winning the ball back. The ball's uh, ricocheting from one team to the other in the end. Booted out by number 22. Sorry, by 23, uh, Hassi Bali. Just uh, ball just been given away from one team to the other time and time again here. Getting a little bit scrappy in that midfield area. Ball has swung right into the six yard box and here's a deflection a keeper does well again anything loose he has well, the, <laughs> the Thomas Telford ultras in the corner there uh, are starting to Try and get their, some encouragement behind their team, but a lot quieter than the Thomas Telford support that came up to Fard last week. And Ali's completely taken his man out there. A little bit of an insult on top as well, just to rub it in. The referee's given a free kick, and Thomas Telford have taken it quickly. But that really is. Well, that's row, what was that, row F? Half an hour to go. And I think the uh, oh, the kids here have got the ball. Well done. I think uh, we're starting to get into that little bit of twilight zone now. Well, literally with the light here, but also John Dayski will start having an eye on the clock. I just feel that they might just take a little bit longer over every throw, free kick, corner that goes their way. Burn out wide. Nicholson miscontrolled though. Ball's gone loose and referee giving a free kick to Thomas Telford. save from the edge of the box the left foot swing and well whiter if we look at the replay of this good play down the right you can see the rain and the hail coming down here it was uh, the number 19 Joseph Pratt swings the left foot in keeper just gets a touch and the corner's not the best again but Jamie Boulderston will have another opportunity here. Call out his practice attempt. Oh, that's awkward. The keeper does well just to. That was swinging in at the near post. Heffernan does well, skips away, decides to go for the sprint down the line, but slightly. Plays, and here comes the hail again. Oh my god, I'm so happy that we're under a roof. 
Those guys are getting absolutely hammered out there. This is not good conditions to be playing football in. You can see the hail absolutely. I'm sure you can see it on your camera. Tin and Spratt. Slight miscontrol there from Richards. Goalkeeper comes to clear things up. John Acton. Ali. The referee says play on. I think he would have given Medeski a free kick there. There's no overlap on the right at the moment. Heffernan came inside. And Jabril's just hobbling a little bit in midfield. I think, uh, I think it's just a cramp. There's another player down as well up at the top for John Medeski in the left-back position. Oh, this really is not, not nice at all out there. Good cross in from Telford. Here's an opportunity and that ball just fell away. Not was dangerously coming in there. John Medeski still playing. There's still a man down here. Well, if John Medeski aren't going to put the ball out, Thomas Telford certainly aren't going to put the ball down. Referee. This is quite unusual. Now well, there's a free kick. Now we can get treatment. It's a very unusual passage of play, though. He must have been on the floor for two minutes. Somebody going to give him treatment? Nobody's coming out to him yet. I think it's just crap. Well, there's a little bit of a discussion going on here. There's, it looks like the fourth official is just preventing one of the uh, coaching staff from going onto the pitch. We've got St John's ambulance who uh, are here. I think it's just a cramp, in which case that would have been really painful. He was, he was there cramping away for well over a minute. Yeah, just needed a stretch. There's a few players here all having cramp. We've got another one down below us as well. Could be a little bit of injury time here. Still uh, 25 minutes to go just under. Looks like there's a substitution anyway. It's uh, Caelan Barlow, looks like he's coming off. The man with the cramp. I'm just waiting for the number of the, the man coming on. Number 40, of course it is. Fania Fak Mania Fakir is on. So, there's only Jack Charles who hasn't got onto the pitch yet for Medeski Academy, not the best cross again from uh, Joseph Pratt, but it can't be easy, conditions are changing so much and a wet ball and it's so cold out there also. Fakir getting into a first bit of action and uh, not wanting the free kick, the referee is not interested. I feel a little bit sorry for the ball boys and ball girls that are out there getting a little bit on the wet side as well. Local uh, local school providing kids with a uh, chance to see some uh, top class football up close. Challenge in there in midfield. Ali clears, but no great distance on that one. But that's a giveaway from Thomas Telford. And great challenging with Gavington. Gavington looks like he's down again. Well, 
Well, I think the rain has just turned in, uh, the hail has just turned into rain at the moment. It's still uh, quite heavy out there. Here's Ryan Knott. Plays in Josh Garrington. Garrington swinging it in. Messi clearance, not cleared well by Medeski. Eventually, Heffernan with the ball. Two on two here. Heffernan likes to go it alone. We've seen that before. Wait. Fakir. Uh, sorry, that was a Magla on the overlap there. And O'Kelly. Locking the ball. Control there from Smallwood for Thomas Telford. The ball's just zinging around as if it's got electricity in it. There's going from player to player quickly. It's been lost. It's been changing hands. It's been quite scrappy sometimes in midfield. It's just needed that player from one of the teams to be able to get a foot on the ball and just have that ability to, if a defending player overcommits, just to be able to do something with it. Good play here from Thomas Telford. Ethan Tien Spratt. Seems to go long to the far corner. Headers won well there. By Jason Harris who really pushed up high. Now Heffernan. You see he's got pace to burn. That's it. Good tackle. Here, who's uh, did well there from a very wide position to develop that into the box, given away there by Jabril. Nadeski managed to win the ball back. Ali out left. Referee says play on here. I was expecting that. There's the shot from Wright, but it slid off his foot. A few tough players just queering the referee on what looked like a, a foul and we've got a double change for Thomas Telford 15 is on Jamal McIntosh and it's Ryan Knott it's a uh, sorry 36 coming off Jason Harris it looks like we've got a looks like uh, Jamie Balderston is dropping back to a right back position and McIntosh is going on up front so They've taken the right back off. And 24 is coming on. Joel Hodnett. And 45, Ryan Knott, who's been playing wide out on the left, is coming off. It looks like it's a straight positional swap. Actually, no, I'll take that back. Joel Hodnett also going on up front. So. McIntosh and Hodner both lining up in a central forward position. And it looks like number 19, Joseph Pratt's gone out towards the left wing. So a new threat here for Thomas Telford. Two new fresh players are on. McIntosh playing more towards the right side and Hodner straight up the middle. Also have a change by the looks of it. 54 and 48. So Will Okin Peters, who was off fairly early on in the first half, it must be said. I wonder if he'd got a knock. And Nicky Heffernan uh, is going off. So that looks like it's a straight swap further upfield. We will be having a, a man of the match vote 
And you go to Twitter, you go to the at schools football Twitter handle, you go to that uh, page, and there will be a live vote on there for you to be able to vote for your man of the match. We'll be giving you four players to take your pick from. Goalkeeper's made a mistake there, and the referee has awarded the goal. Possibly a question of handball in there, but John Mendeski, a 2-0 up. And the Thomas Telford team just cannot believe it. Here's the goal, there's the pass back, and the goalkeeper slightly got the ball. And it's well, he's only been on the pitch two seconds. Will Okeen Peters, was it? He's only just come back on. And he scored the second goal. And John Medeski 2 0 up with just 15 minutes to go. Will Okeen Peters with the goal. And uh, it, was, it was our new man at right back as well. He's just gone back there, just played a. There was nothing wrong with the ball, to be honest, but the goalkeeper just let the ball just go under his feet a little bit. And he's, uh, he's looking dejected back in the back in goal there. He knows that he should have done better. He had options to easily just play the ball wide, but once you've got the ball stuck under your feet a little bit. So now, time is not on Thomas Telford's side. They've got to do something quickly. They've already put two fresh forwards up there. They've not really had the chance to get the ball. Here's a change for John Medeski Academy, number 14 is going off, Ethan O'Kelly and uh, I think that says number 30 of which I do not have a number 30, oh there you go, Luke Dumble is coming back on, he was on a little bit earlier and he's coming on he, uh, is it going to be a straight swap in centre midfield by the looks of it, a lot of course these players under 18 level they do play many different positions Thomas Telford have to do something quickly. That ball's long and deep into the box. Good tackle. Just about to draw the trigger. Shot from distance. Important tackle there from Richard Colley, who uh, hurt himself a little bit in doing it. And now the sun's come back out. There's going to be a rainbow somewhere, but I can't see it yet. <laughs> but the sun is out just at the top of the pitch certainly the sun shining on John Medeski at the moment it's been a really tight match Acton good solid clearance and now Thomas Telford have 13 12 minutes to try and score two goals they really need to score quickly and then do it again Great play there from Joshua Smallwood. Turned inside. Tel Thomas Telford have got plenty of players in the box. You feel Medeski, there's an opportunity. Oh, what a chance. Here's a throw on goal. Cleared and missed kick from in front of goal. Oh, what a chance that was. What a real chance that was for Thomas Telford. We'll look at the replay of that shortly. But they come again. And you feel that Medeski were actually short on numbers at the back there. Another good cross, a real good left foot Josh Garrington has. Again, Medeski are short on numbers. No pressure at all on the delivery from the edge of the box. And well, they've got a clear. ball down the line for Pratt, Pratt turns inside again, he's got options left and right, 
It's almost that uh, John Medeski have got overloaded in the centre of the pitch, but get the ball out wide and there's options out there. Here's Tien and Spratt. Good cross field. Nicholson. But Nicholson's given the ball away. And that will be handball. And I think uh, Medeski are very happy to take their time over this free kick. They've got one eye on the clock now. Ten minutes to go. John Medeski two. The John Medeski Academy two. Thomas Telford school nil in this under 18 schools cup for B teams final Donville fresh on the pitch playing a more central role in this second appearance having uh, played more left-sided in the first part of the match Joaquin Peters here's Amiglo Amaglo sorry Round of applause for the Medeski defence. Just giving them a little break there as Medeski win a throw. Wait. Score for first goal. Voting is out there, and I can give you the options that none of this I've contributed towards uh, actually. As, uh, but I do agree, Joe Whiter in goal for John Medeski. Number 18, Steve Nicholson for Thomas Telford. Nicky Heffernan, 48 for John Medeski. And Joe Wright. Eighteen for Deski, so get your votes in now. We've got eight minutes left on it. So if you're watching this live, get over to Twitter, ESFA. vote in but uh, I think I'm uh, half tied between two players actually so it's uh, there's a substitution below us number four goes off number 17 is on so Ethan Tien and Spratt leaves the field and Dante Bradley is on the pitch so Thomas Telford uh, not using the rotating substitute system which is available and I think I do remember from previous previous events is that they do even though it's available to them they don't believe in in playing the, that system and or going high and up into the top tier of seating way could take a while to come back. I think they need another ball quickly. Yes, I think uh, personally, um, I'm 50 50 between uh, Joe Whiter in goal for John Medeski, who has been excellent, and Joe Waite, who scored the first goal but has always been involved in many moves, many link ups. I think I'm 50-50 really between those two personally. Time is running out here. No handball there, that one was off the stomach. His offside is given as Okin uh, P 
Peters manages to score but the, the offside was already given but nice to see a bit of sportsmanship between the two players there as well as I said there was a little bit of a collision Thomas Tav have got five players up front at the moment. They really are pushing players up. They've got nothing to lose. Five minutes to go. And they're going a little bit more route one now. Flick on. Route one may well work. Very valid tactic just to change things. Tav tries to go inside. Here's Bradley. Bradley does well and will win the free kick. Goes quick, a bit unnecessary really, but Pratt, good skills from Pratt here. Good work, and the goal kick is given. Could have, well, uh, Pratt could easily have been in that top four. He's been so busy for Thomas Telford in this match. Four minutes to go. Thomas Telford needs to score twice. <laughs> Miss kicked badly. Back here as well. Trying to play in Donville. Dunbar wasn't really wanting the ball there. And Thomas Telford come away. Good fellow. Down the line for Nicholson. The captain. Nicholson manages to get past his player. The referee thought about a free kick there. Just put his hand up but changed his mind. Joaquin Peters. Will want to try and just keep possession but marshalled well by Joe Byrne there. Who looks uh, a great defender, does burn. Maybe just a couple of minutes injury time, if, if that, in this match. Peters will take the foul but they've played on and onside is is called I'm sure he was a few yards off but here we go there's a ball inside here's a chance for the third but it was just behind Luke Dumble <coughs> as he came in and uh, again Telford just piling players forward now five forward in already it's uh, all he can do Pratt wanting the ball back Smallwood Pratt coming in on this but the ball just going loose and Ali clears the ball out and gets a high five from his fellow centre half and a good player as uh, Hasib Ali since he came on Another, another change at the up at the top and it's John Medeski 32 and 54 so Jack Charles is on and Will O'Keen Peters well he only came on for a short while he, I've got a feeling he's carrying a knock and he came on he scored the second goal but I've just got a feeling that uh, he does he is carrying an injury it's the second time he's he's not had much action on the pitch but he's come and done his stuff and well it's probably going to be enough by the looks of it and it looks like Jack Charles is uh, is another defender so it looks like John Modeski don't actually have a centre forward at the moment Fakir is uh, 
sort of midfielder who's the furthest forward for the Medeski team. The clock officially up on our clock. I think uh, they're a little bit slow on the stadium clock, but we're already in additional time. Referee just signalling, I believe he's signalled two minutes. Thomas Telford get the throw and Medeski just caught a little bit napping here. Appealing. Two minutes is shown on the board. Uh, a few of the Thomas Telford players starting to there's a few hands going to heads and you realise that this game is over two goals surely going to be enough well, there wasn't, it, wasn't it the Champions League semi-final or quarter-final last year or the year before Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain and Barcelona were going out and Scored three goals. 88 minutes to go on the go clock. Scored three goals. With uh, five minutes of injury time added as well. Fakir, who's the most forward player now for John Medeski. Uh, Medeski with a line of seven behind at the moment. Just happy to keep things tight at the back. And good pressure from way to. Well, I'll be honest, he was my choice of man in the match. Wasn't in the starting lineup, but when he came on, really did show a difference and been involved in all the link play. Full time whistle. And. Players are running on. Dom Medeski Academy have won this under 18. Scores Great performance by the Medeski team. And uh, they're going to be taking the trophy back to Reading. There we go. Get a few pictures for the phot photographer out there. There you go, lads. <laughs> it's a bit cold. There you go. That's a way to celebrate. You've got your name on your shirt. <laughs> They're not shy, these lads, are they? Well, we're going to stay for the, the celebrations. Well played, boys. Any team that beats the Thomas Telford team is going to have to have played good football. And Medeski have won this by two goals to nil. I'm going to leave you uh, with BMC. We'll be back to close the match off in a short while.
So John Medeski Academy win this under 18 Schools Cup for B teams here at the Montgomery Waters Meadow home of Shrewsbury Town FC. We're going to head off here. I hope you've enjoyed this coverage. It's a bit of de-rigging to do but we've thoroughly enjoyed the day's entertainment. Two cracking matches. Hampton School beating the defending champions Repton School on penalties in the under 18 schools cup the open competition and then this is the B team competition and John Medeski Academy deserving their victory here today my name's Adrian Battersby thank you for watching very much we'll see you Friday here on the ESFA TV YouTube channel with a really big match in the under 18 international England versus Northern Ireland in the Centenary Shield. That's going to be a cracker and it's a big match for England as you see the Medeski lads getting their pictures. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now. <laughs>